Men of Reddit, when have you experienced sexism? If you have a story related to this topic, post it in the comments. And I will definitely make a second part with your story. Enjoy the show! Story 1. When my HR rep tried to tell me I wasn't entitled to full pay for shared parental leave, despite it saying I was in black and white in the shared parental leave policy, they told me that was aimed at female staff taking shared parental leave. I sent them a six-page letter detailing exactly which detailed exactly which parts of the Equality Act 2010 they were breaking, including relevant case law. They sent the director of HR to meet with me, who told me I was absolutely right. Apparently, it was the first time anyone had sent them a letter with footnotes and sources. Story 2. Confrontation with a lady at the park while I, M34, was there with my daughter, F2. She asked my daughter, who was holding my hand on the swing and did not talk at the time, where mommy was. When my daughter didn't respond, because strange new person and being two, I told the lady that mom was at work for the day and we were having a day-daughter day. She snapped back that she asked my daughter, and not me, earmuffed my daughter, told this lady to kindly go bad word herself and leave us alone. I invited her to go down the street to the police station if she had a problem, and we could clear up this whole thing but that I would definitely pursue any and all legal retaliation if she wanted to go that route. As she stormed away, muttering to herself, my daughter waved goodbye because she's super sweet. Story 3. One job I had was terrible for bad word harassment. Not everyone there was bad, but a few were. Most of it was more annoying than anything else like catcalling. And I was a supervisor, so I walked around the office a lot, and a few girls I interacted with would almost always turn anything into a bad word comment. Some other doozies had one girl asking what kind of girls I was into while I was in the break room, pouring myself water and asking how I would feel about her doing this, then grinder her bad word up my leg. Since the office was open until midnight and I closed, I was usually the last person around, so someone would ask if they could stay with me while they waited for their ride. So I'd say sure, and I'd be leaning back in my chair with my eyes closed, then notice she put her hand on my upper thigh and starts rubbing. Another girl was on a late shift and had a bunch of shopping bags as she went clothes shopping before her shift. I could hear her and her friend whispering if she should show me what she bought, then asked if I wanted to see. She then ran off to the washroom, then came back and pulled down her skirt to ask if I liked her new thong. She had more, but I said not to show me. And since I was a supervisor, my cell number was public. Some would get drunk and tell me how horny they were and ask if I would come over. Most left it when I said no, but one sent unsolicited twat pics. After that, I kept thinking, is this what women go through? Admittedly, the girls were fairly young. But when I tried complaining about it to management, they were asking what I was doing to provoke these girls into these acts. Like I'm just trying to do my work. Story 4. I was bullied by a girl in school from the ages of 7. 11 in primary school. It started verbal, but quickly moved to physical. Towards the end of the experience, after receiving zero help from anyone at the school, my mom told me to finally step up and take a stand myself. We were both fed up of the school not doing anything no matter what we said, and it was making school life even more miserable to the point I really didn't want to go. So when she next came to beat me up, I fought back myself. I know it wasn't necessarily the right thing to do, but I was fed up, and it was making life crappy so it was the best option I could see at the time. The head teacher, also a female, was far from happy or understanding, and I was subject to some of the school's strictest punishment, bar suspension expelling. And the female bully, all she had to do was write a letter of apology for the incident, which it didn't take an expert to realize was far from heartfelt. During the entire bullying ordeal, a lot of people would laugh at me and tell me, you're getting beaten up by a girl, a trend which unfortunately continues to this day when I feel brave enough to share my story, and something I'm sure many others who have been involved in a similar situation have experienced. Story 5. You can't get rap, D. You're a guy, by my therapist. When I tried to tell her about what I experienced when I was 8 edit, I went through some old photos and found one from about when that happened. I was 10, not 8, but still. Story 6. I worked in an office on a team that was all women except me. Most of them were nice. Three, including the supervisor, kind of an assistant manager role, were not. They always talked down to me as if I was less intelligent. They never used that same tone with other women, even after I was no longer the newest employee. But the supervisor was the worst. Whenever I approached her with a problem I found in the data we were verifying, she'd gasp and repeat what I said, like a parent might do when their kid rushes in excitedly to show off a sparkly rock, and she refused to believe me unless I had concrete proof. My one co-worker friend on that team helped me with an experiment once. I told the supervisor that I thought this record and that record needed to be merged. Supervisor did her gasp, really, thing, then told me to check A, B, and C, which I'd already done, before she'd even look at my paperwork. I just walked away. One hour later, 
Coworker, as planned, took the same information to supervisor and phrased the concern the same way. Supervisor took everything coworker said at face value and took action immediately. This may be mild compared to others' experiences, but it was new and frustrating to me. People, I don't think I've ever treated you that way, but if I did, I apologize. Story 7. Was working in a psychology research lab during my undergraduate degree, alongside a female student. We had to meet up on the weekend to prepare some data for a presentation. She suggested we meet at her place, which was cool with me. Upon arriving, she and her two female roommates kept trying to convince me to have drinks, alcoholic ones. I just didn't feel like drinking that night, plus we had work to do, so I politely declined. They were super insistent and basically forced a drink on me, which I just took a couple sips of to shut them up. The student I was working with then tried to get me to see her room and suggested we fool around and tried to kiss me. I wasn't into it, politely said that I had a girlfriend and couldn't, which was a lie but I felt it was kinder, and tried to get her to get back to work. She got really frustrated and kicked me out, leaving me to finish the project alone at home. Then, later that night, she sent me a bunch of drunken text messages calling me inappropriate names and saying if I didn't come back over and engage in sexual activity with her, then she would go to our professor and make false accusation. I didn't respond, and first thing in the morning I went to see my prof and explained everything. She was sort of understanding, but then said, I can see why she likes you. You're cute. Pretty inappropriate if you ask me. Finally, that female student faced no consequences, remained in the lab, and received equal credit on the project that I did 90% of the work on. Story 8. I am a father of three. At the church I used to attend, they wanted you to volunteer to work in the kids' Sunday school a couple of times a year. So I was volunteering with another dad in the two, three-year-old classroom. We both had three-year-olds in the class. The Sunday school supervisor came in and said that we couldn't be there without a woman present. Never volunteered ever again. Story 9. So at the time, I was in my mid-twenties. One of my best friends was in a well-known theater. They were doing Shakespeare, and he invited me to come see his show. So, of course, I was excited to come see my friend do a show, and he even got me a free ticket. So it's a children's theater, and the time he got me a ticket for was a show when a bunch of school children were also going to see the show. No problem, right? I like kids. I'm in my mid-twenties, and I don't think I look creepy. Well, I'm checking in with the ticket lady, and she is kind of giving me weird vibes. I tell her about how my friend is in the show and how he got me a ticket. No problem, she gets me checked in and tells me where to find my seat. Then, right at the very end of the interaction, she says to me, Enjoy the show, have a great time. This shook me. I always thought of myself as a kind young man and never imagined anyone looking at me and getting any negative vibes. It's been over a decade since that interaction, and I still am self-conscious around kids. The lady really ruined my ability to feel comfortable around kids. Story 10 when I was in elementary school, these individuals used to physically harm me every day, and I wouldn't retaliate unless it was a matter of self-defense. They did it so often that there's no way the teacher didn't see, but it seems like she just didn't care. They never faced any consequences for their actions. Story 11. I experienced a terrible incident as a teenager, and when I shared it with my friends, a guy who wasn't part of our group of friends butted into high five and congratulate me. I also faced instances of physical assault by girls with the expectation that it was acceptable and that I should deal with it because I'm a guy. Moreover, they expected not to face any physical response from me because they were girls. They didn't, but the point still stands. Story 12. Don't know if it's sexism, but it's stereotyping prejudice. I have witnessed a lot of things happen to my boyfriend, which he shrugs off. I'm a woman, but I hate how he and my male friends is treated. So I've been with my partner for a while now. We lived in a ski resort and went out to the clubs quite a bit. My boyfriend would be hit on relentlessly. There are a lot of disrespectful individuals out there. We made the mistake of going to a cougar night. My partner was touched without consent, pulled, kissed by unpleasant individuals. They were tugging on his shirt, using inappropriate language and essentially demeaning him. He felt he had to laugh and shrug it off because he was worried that if he defended himself, he'd face repercussion. When I say things like this happened every time, it happened every time we went out. He was constantly touched without consent, grinded on, pulled, kissed, etc. My partner never felt like he could say anything. The worst part is that when he did walk away or push them away, the individuals would say some of the nastiest things, like, go away then, you stupid creep, or what are you, gay or something. What's wrong with you, dude? And then go complain to their friends. My partner, bless him, shrugged everything off. I've seen the same thing happen to most of my male friends. Girls will try to take their tops off, follow them around, get angry if they ignore them, and more. Now, turn the tables to the girls. 
My female friends have said some of the most horrendous things, and they giggle and get away with it. The majority of my single female pals have the mentality of men just want sex. They'll have sex with anything, so they'll have sex with me. They won't say no to me, so they become extremely inappropriate. But it all gets laughed off and enabled. Again, I'm unsure if it fits the bill of OP's question, but it still frustrates me. My boyfriend never shows it, but I know that it makes him feel deeply uncomfortable, but he's unable to say anything. He'd be thrown out by security if he rejects the wrong individual. TLDR. Inappropriate behavior goes both ways, and guys often feel pressured to accept it because of stereotypes. Story 13. Walking into a grocery store with a backpack on, I was forced to take it off or leave. Right after me, a woman comes in with a purse literally twice the size of my backpack and was told nothing. I pointed to her bag and said, Let's be clear, she can bring in this massive bag while I can't bring in my backpack? Make it make sense. She said, the difference is that I don't steal. I found this situation frustrating. Story 14. I'm Scottish and have worn a kilt on occasion, such as weddings. Some women seem to think it's okay to lift my kilt up in the middle of a busy room, then accuse me of overreacting when I tell them to back off. If I did the same to them, I'd rightfully face consequences. But a disturbing number of people seem to think it's fine to do to a man. Story 15. It was a strange experience. In my company of about 70 employees, 65 of them are women. There was a heated argument among a few women, and they asked how I managed to stay out of all the petty gossip. One of the other women in the meeting said, because he never has a period. And all the women agreed. I honestly wasn't sure if it was offensive, but I was very confused about that being the only reason I'm not involved in workplace disputes. Story 16. I do constantly. I work in a drugstore pharmacy, and thanks to an interest in special effects makeup, I know a bit about cosmetics. I also know a bit about hair because I like to dye mine. On more than one occasion, I've offered assistance to a woman with makeup or hair care, and she gave me an odd look and said, do you have a female employee on staff who could help instead? I've never encountered issues when helping males, though. I once assisted a guy in hiding a hickey with concealer and foundation so he could go to an interview. Story 17. I worked as the only male in a bank. When I refused to be friends outside of the workplace, I got my car keyed, they harassed me at work, and eventually went to my boss with false accusations regarding my performance. This is the only job I've ever walked out of without giving notice. I was also denied any type of unemployment or separation benefits because there was no way a man was discriminated against. Story 18. Woman here, but I observed something at work the other day that I believe to be blatant sexism against a man. Male co-worker. I like your shirt. Female co-worker. I like your pants. They should be on my floor tonight. He immediately filed a complaint with HR in their response. Not their problem since it was a woman who made the comment. He quit the next day. Story 19. Not a man, but in university, I recommended a friend of mine to my job, which needed more part-time workers. They fired him after two shifts for not knowing how to sweep properly. But I found out a month later that they didn't hire men for front of house work and only hired him in the first place to be polite to me. Story 20. When I worked at the grocery store in high school, I was facing the shelves with a female partner. A woman walked up to her and said, I just wanted to tell you that I've never seen a guy do as good a job as a girl at fixing the shelves. I'm sure it was a girl power moment in her mind, but it sure felt like a negative statement about men to me. Not to mention it didn't have to be said in front of me. It made an insecure, undersized teenager feel like he would never be as good as a girl. Meanwhile, my partner was the definition of the hot chick. Story 21. I attended a vocational school during my junior and senior years of high school, and I went into the CNA program. For those two years that I was there, the class population was less than 10% boys, and there were only female teachers. The number of times the girls thought it was appropriate to steal my papers and notes to cheat off of was insane, to the point where I had to move to the corner of the room to work in peace. The petty drama was awful as well. At one point, I was sent to the office after causing an uproar because I looked at someone with an inflammatory tone. The male principal for the school flat out said to me, we've had a lot of complaints from that class from male students. We'll look into it. And I was sent back without punishment. The teacher was put under review, rumor has it, which is also probably why she's transferring out soon. I almost dropped out like three times because every day I would get talked down to, ignored, or disrespected by both the students and teachers. At least I make more money than most of my fellow students. Story 22. I was sitting on a bench outside the Victoria's Secret in the mall with my four-month-old son, and his mother, my wife, was in the store. I had been there for less than five minutes when a Victoria's Secret staff member asked me to move. 
I explained that I was waiting for my wife, but she implied I was a kidnapper and a pedophile. I did not raise my voice or speak down to her, but I stayed sitting and did not move. Seconds later, mall security approached and asked what I was doing. I asked why I was being harassed for sitting and waiting with my infant son outside the store my wife was patronizing. The security guard said that the staff had made some false claims. About then, my wife came out with a couple of big Victoria's secret bags and asked what was happening. After a quick and disrespectful exchange, the security guard left. My wife returned the items she had bought. I called the store and communicated with corporate about my experience, and I was basically told, because you're a guy, we don't care about your experiences. Just go away. Story 23. Anytime I'm out with my kids and people ask me if I'm babysitting. No, I'm not babysitting. I'm a stay-at-home dad and I'm parenting. You pay a babysitter to watch someone else's kids. You raise your own kids. But just because I'm not a mother, people assume I must be watching them part-time. Story 24. I'm a security guard for a store. A group of guys came in once and started tearing things apart. My female partner and I told them to get out. While they were filming me in my face, I tried to cover the lens with my hand, and one of the guys immediately swung at me. Then his three other buddies started kicking my ass too. My female partner tried to stop them, but to no avail. They seemed to focus all their aggression on me, the man, and had no interest in touching her. I ended up with a lot of bruises, a concussion, and misdemeanor battery charges for those guys. Afterward, my female partner decided to transfer because she doesn't feel safe. Story 25. I understand this doesn't count, but I want to say it anyway. I was reading my school handbook, and I saw something about the Selective Service Act. It said all men who turn 18 have to apply for the Selective Service. That wouldn't even be worth mentioning on its own, but the line directly after that said you can't discriminate based on sex. Like I said, I know this doesn't count, and they don't contradict each other, but you couldn't have put anything else after that line? Story 26. Just went to quad day at my university a few weeks ago. I went to check out some engineering stuff, and I kept seeing things that looked cool. I read a little further in and saw that it's exclusively for women. I think the idea is that it's for women who won't fit in at the other clubs for this sort of thing. But maybe it would be easier if, oh, I don't know, we just put the clubs together, so there's men and women in the same club. It really felt bad to keep seeing things I couldn't be a part of. Story 27. I was sexually assaulted at work by a woman, and people laughed when I told them. I was a field service man and went into a lot of people's homes. After being so shocked that she undid my belt pants, I said no and pushed her off. I took a break and made the call, and I was still expected to finish the job. Also, a large percentage of women I have dated were surprised, disappointed when I expressed my emotions. It seems many want emotionally stunted men. Specifically, I broke it off with one girl, because when my father died near my birthday, which is a few days from Christmas, apparently not treating her like a princess through that shitstorm was a problem. Story 28. Yes, regularly. Women at every company, corporate, I have worked for openly make cyst comments about myself or others. They either comment on looks or say how men are stupid or make comments like, he's a man, makes sense. He only got that because he's a man. I generally don't generally point out that these comments are sexist discriminatory because I am a white man, and even speaking up about something like that can still land me on hot water. I actually did once and was told I am a white man and have no right to complain about anything. But it's dejecting to hear this as it devalues me and all men. It's also sad to have such a double standard in which if I personally said even 5% of what I have heard women say, I would immediately be reported and walked out the door. Story 29. When I told two female people about how I was molested when I was eight, Ishwan had nothing to say, just a, oh, whatever, you probably enjoyed it kind of attitude. The other literally said, bro, nice, and went for a high five while I just stood there like, not the reaction I was looking for. So now I tell no one that knows me about it. I once complimented a maybe 15-ish year old girl's shirt at my work because I thought it was pretty funny. It said I enjoy long walks to the fridge. Her look looked at her then to me before the girl could say anything and said, that's my daughter, she's 15. I looked at her and said, I just thought her shirt was funny. Commented on a girl's hair and she said I have a boyfriend. Thought, F, you I just liked your hair. Held a door open for a woman. She said I'm taken. I closed the door before she got to it. Story 30. Any time I've been told to, when my female friends upset me, and I tried to tell them, and one of them told me, how you feel. When a woman expresses interest in me, I do not return, and she, and others, demand to know my specific reason for rejecting her because, interested, isn't an acceptable answer for a man to give a woman. It's assumed any man is attracted to all women. More minor example. 
I was in a continuing education class as an adult, got to the final level, and by then not many people stayed with the program. This class happened to be four women and me. The teacher was a woman. One student was far and away the best in the class. Another was how did you pass the previous level amount of bad, and the rest of us were all pretty close to each other in the middle. The teacher was cruel to me from day one, constantly snapping at me, eternally telling me I was wrong about anything. Granted, it was the highest level, and I expected high standards, and not to have a teacher just give you the answer if you didn't know it. I saw my fellow students make mistakes, and she'd let them finish and then tell them they had made an error, and give them a chance to figure it out on their own. If they couldn't, she'd start to give hints or suggestions. Not me. If I made a mistake, she'd cut me off to say, You're wrong. Do it again. If I was truly stuck and wasn't sure what my mistake was or how to fix it, she just let me flounder and forced me to repeat it over and over in front of the class. There was one particular mistake I actually didn't make, but the worst classmate did constantly. The teacher would eternally accuse me of doing it and never the student who actually did it. Story 31. Worked for a large retail company in the UK and was based in their head office. I was part of the photography team. When I started, there were three guys and one girl, and there were no problems at all. The last six months, it became three girls and one guy, a.k.a. me. I was expected to do all heavy lifting on my own, clean the bins on my own, and do all washing up as well. And for my efforts, I was demoted. One of the team with half the experience of me was promoted ahead of me and made the manager. They caused problems which put me on review. And then I was pushed into a spiral of depression that led me down a dark path. It was all very one-sided and unfair. Thankfully, I'm not there now. But the mental scars are still very fresh. Story 32 worked in a toxic office. The women kept on making inappropriate comments. When I became the manager, I started slowly addressing the issues, such as telling one guy his calendars had to come down and advising one of the more obnoxious colleagues to tone it down a couple of notches, etc. Story 33. I'm a man in a traditionally women's job. I'm a male nurse. Especially older generations are prejudiced against us. Here are some common things I get to hear. Male nurse? Too stupid for med school, huh? Isn't there a real nurse available? A female one. Oh, sorry, I thought you were the doctor, but you're just a nurse. So yeah, I know discrimination. Story 34. When I was 17 and worked in a restaurant, had a female co-worker who was 28 constantly heart eat s me about having SX with her and what she would do to me. She literally licked my ear one time. When I went to a manager about it, they gave me advice about how to make myself less attractive and suggested that I just give in and have X with her so she would lose interest. Story 35. Gonna keep this short as I'm short on time ATM. There was the girl my sophomore year of high school who accused me of RPE because she was trying to get back at one of my cousins and thinking I was said cousin's younger brother. Was always the one who had to lift heavy stuff at my deli bakery job of which I was the only guy there for the longest period of time, possibly related to up above. Anytime I need or wanted a day off, no one would cover or swap shifts with me. Had a girl at said job accuse me of schism and arsism because I kept calling out her major food safety fuck-ups, like serving people raw chicken that was in a rotisserie for 20 minutes, or making cookies on a table with chicken juice slash blood liquid. Took four months of writing down everything she did before she was finally fired, and four binders, about 250 pages each. When my ex started getting physically abusive to me, most everyone I talked to said to suck it up, despite the fact that at one point I thought she seriously fucked up my right arm at one point. Couldn't lift anything over 10, 15 LBs with my right arm without intense pain. Story 36. My ex-wife is a die-hard feminist. I left because she hit me one day while fighting. Not hard, just enough to let me know she was mad and to hurt my pride. So I left for the day, and when I came back later that night, she asked when I was going to apologize for leaving the house a mess while she was at work. 